All right, students, welcome back to chapter three, Managing Systems Projects. This is probably one of my favorite chapters. I really enjoy project management and you know, project management is really a science of its own. And if this is something you find interesting or something you wanna to add to your resume, I really suggest pursuing and studying to get your PMP certification, your project management certification. So what is project management, especially what is project management in terms of system analysis and design? Well, it's planning, scheduling, monitoring, controlling, and reporting on information systems or development. What does that really mean? This is the cradle to support for a system. You would sit down with all the stakeholders, figure out what, what features they find useful, start building them into the project, test it, deliver it, and then ultimately provide support for that program when it's issued out. For a project to be successful, it just doesn't mean that you deliver the project. We have to be on time within their budget and meet the requirements that way the end user is satisfied with the result. And it's a real balancing act. You know, we always say it can either be, you know, good or cheap or have different functions and you really have to figure out what is the optimal balance among all of your factors you know do we do it on time do we have the right features that they want is the scope correct you know uh is the cost we're going to charge our end user under their initial quote it's a real balancing act and the larger and more complex your projects get the harder it is to find this optimal balance. There's multiple schools of thought to look at a project manager, but there's a couple similar characteristics. They're in charge of the project, really. They're in charge of the planning, scheduling, monitoring, and reporting. You can look at a project manager as kind of the, the middleman between the stakeholders, the customer who we're delivering to, and the workers, you know, the, the programmers, the people behind the scenes. A, a lot of times when we're teaching project management examples, we talk about construction because that's relatively easy for anyone to understand. If you hired me to build a porch, you know, a porch addition to your house, I would be the project manager and I would be the go between between you and different subcontractors who would pour concrete footers, who would bring in the lumber and the laborers that would actually build the deck. It, it makes things easier. That way the customer isn't interacting with the people doing the work uh, and it prevents things from getting lost in translation uh, or even just keeps a project on schedule because there are times where a stakeholder might think they want a requirement or would ask for a requirement that just quite frankly can't be done that needs to go through the project manager because if they were to go directly to one of the workers things could get confused and they could try to change the scope prematurely so the project manager is really sort of the jack of all trades making sure that the project gets completed on time on or under budget and making sure that we're meeting all of our stakeholders wickets everything that they want to have in that project gantt charts are your friends this is a breakdown of different milestones for this project different sub projects if you will again it, let's go back to a, a construction metaphor if we're going to build a house the first thing we need to do is clear the land that's one milestone once the land is cleared we can then lay a foundation when the foundation is done, then we can start framing the building. There are certain things that have to be done. There are certain key routes. You know, you can't lay a foundation without the land being cleared. You can't start framing a house without the foundation being laid and the concrete to be dry. These types of charts make projects very easy to understand. They visually show breakdowns of milestones. And it's just... it. It's it's an accomplishment when you can cross one of those milestones off, and that's something the whole team can really uh, cherish. Here we see a pretty simple Gantt chart, but you see you have different tasks. There are six tasks here. Uh, after task one, it immediately goes to two, but you can also branch off in five, and you see that task five and two can run simultaneously, but two, three, four, and five all have to be done before six. Two has to be done before 
three and four. Again, it's a really great visualization to look at all of the tasks that are due in a project. Anytime I'm making a Gantt chart or a work breakdown structure, I like to, in a, in a separate document, I usually write it down, pen and paper, I list every single task that, that I can think of, and obviously I would consult my team as well. But we want to look at all the tasks that need to be accomplished, and estimate your task duration. How many days, weeks, or months will that individual task take? And we can do time estimates as well. And a lot of times when I do my task estimation, I come up with the best and worst case scenario. And that way, one, I could be more thorough and honest with the customer and to say, hey, look, you know, if everything's going good, we might get this done in four days. But if we get any hiccups, you know, expect that to go out to a week, maybe a little bit longer. And obviously, the larger the project, the longer the time it'll take and the more resources it'll take. One thing that is often overlooked is the human resources as well. We think a lot of resources as tools, equipment, software. But do we? how many workers do we need? How many actually people doing the work are we accounting for? And then uh, a hidden factor is what kind of behind the scenes workers do we need? Uh, again, we'll look at a construction site. Yes, you need laborers to actually swing hammers and, and move equipment around, but they're going to need people behind the scenes to support them. The same thing if we are developing software. It's not all just programmers. If I need to hire people, well, then now we are taking HR resources. Even before that, I need to start, I need to get people to go out and headhunt and find people and hire them, interview them. So you see the human resource aspect of this can grow exponentially depending on the size of the project. Other things you want to look at is do you or your team have experience with similar projects? If you do, that might make your overall time period shorter. If not, you might want to build in some buffer time because this is a new project for you. And then finally, are there any constraints? Are there requirements that can be achieved realistically within this required constraints? And that could be internal or external constraints. Maybe the customer needs this by a certain time. Maybe you are uh, building a, a new system that's going to replace a system that's sunlighting, and that system is going offline you know, at the first of the year, so you need to have your system built and running before the first of the year. Sometimes there's internal constraints as well. You know, again, maybe this is a project you've done for a long period of time, but you're having massive personnel turnover and you're losing a lot of experience. Well, we want to make sure we get that project done before we lose the experience and along the way do some internal training. Once I get all the tasks in the project, um, and I said earlier I like to write them down, we need to organize them. And we organize them in a couple ways. We want to have dependent tasks, multiple successor tasks, and multiple predecessor tasks. Dependent tasks, these are completed in a sequence. One task can be completed initially only after the prior task has been completed. Go back to our construction metaphor. I cannot frame a house until the foundation is done. Multiple successor tasks. So these things can be done simultaneously. So once the house is framed, we can start putting electricity in, at least running the wires and plumbing. Those two can be done at the same time. Or you might have to have multiple things done before you start a new task. If we want to finish tiling a bathroom, well, not only do, does all the fixtures need to be installed, the tub, the toilets, the sink, but we also might want to have any other floor heat. Maybe we have uh, forced hot air through there. So we have to have certain other things done before we can even tile the floor. What you really need, need to pay attention to is the critical path. This is the path of tasks that if anything in here is delayed, the project will not finish on time. We need to calculate it and we need to figure out what is the critical path and ensure that we devote resources to that. If we look at this, we have task two here that has two tasks that'll start. As soon as we're done with two, we're gonna kick off three and four. But look at the duration here. 
Task three only takes five days. Task four takes 25 days. So our critical path is one, two, four, and five. We can't do task five. Maybe this is delivered to the customer. We can't do this until three and four is done. Well, four is the one that's going to take the longest. That's what we're waiting on. Multiple things could depend on your critical path. Maybe you're waiting for external services that could only be delivered a certain day. Maybe you're waiting for software licenses to come in and you can't start that project until those licenses come in. Make sure, and I sound like a broken record here, but identify your critical path early. Make sure you understand the critical path and make sure you devote resources to your critical path so you do not fall behind. Proper project management can't happen in a bubble. We need to have regularly scheduled meetings. I would usually have Wednesday work meetings. It's easy to remember, like Wednesday work. These are the meetings that we talk about, the actual day-to-day -day work that is being done every week. The project managers will schedule these meetings. They're going to share the updates with the entire team up and down the whole chain of command. They're going to collect data, and they're going to look at trends. Uh, these meetings are going to be turned into status reports, and, and there could be multiple meetings, right? So you can have different meetings with different teams. You want to break down the tasks into certain teams. So the project manager is going to create these reports. Those reports are again they're going to go up and down the entire chain so everybody understands what's going on and most importantly this is a way to build confidence with your stakeholders and keep your stakeholders happy if your customer understands you're making forward progress and they know that you're accomplishing thing and they, they too can check off on the Gantt chart of what gets done that just builds their confidence and usually it makes them overall happy because you have a good communication flow. Uh, this also helps us deal with problems. If we have regularly scheduled meetings, it's easy to bring up problems with the entire team to try to find a solution. There's a lot of different software applications out there to help program managers monitor and track progress. We've talked about Gantt charts. There's many different ways to make those. You can use PERT, CPM, scheduling resources, uh, Monday.com, I'm sure you see commercials for, um, Slack has different programs, there's a lot of, a lot of really great and free resources out there that you can tap into for any project that you might have to undertake. When we're talking about Microsoft Project, that is a Microsoft program, just like Office, Excel, Outlook. Um, I think that's one of the most mature Gantt chart programs out there to, to make really great um, visually clear Gantt charts. Uh, there are free programs out there, but I think Project is uh, polished. Uh, and I have more experience with projects, so I'm a little more comfortable with it. But we can do our Gantt charts, we can do our WPS, we can do different calendar views. The calendar views are really great to hand out to different team members so they can see deadlines and they can see it in, uh, in a calendar. So it makes more sense to them where maybe some of the project managers and supervisors like to see it in a Gantt chart. All right, so that's going to wrap up Chapter 3. Keep pushing forward. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know.